Growing up here has been really nice. It's obviously a bit peaceful and nature and all of that. Also the sport, a bit outside the city. Um, doing quads since I was two and motocross four, karting five. It's all been, you know, a nice place to do everything. The main things for me that I'm able to sort of come back home and disconnect a bit, just move away from everything that's uh, racing in, in my life normally and just relax a bit for myself and a good way for me to just recharge and, and get back on it for the next race. The family has always been supporting, which is a vital thing for me and to know that the support is there and supporting each other. It's really cool to see the interest growing. The fan base back home in Norway has been uh, crazy in the last two years and, and seeing the Norwegian flags on the Tribune or on Instagram or whatever just following up. That's a motivation to have all those people, my family and, and everyone around supporting. <laughs> And these will be special moments. Of course, Norway's got a rich motor racing history going sideways through the scenery in rallying, but they are so excited about their single-seater hope for the future. For the first time in Formula 2, Dennis Hauger wins! Yes! Yes! Oh, finally, boys, finally, come on. What a nice entry to Monaco. One of my favorite tracks now. <laughs> All wins are special at this level of motor racing, but a win in Formula 2 at Monaco where you can see what it means to the man from Oslo. This is everything he dreamt of. Dennis Hauger, in many ways, is a victim of his own success. A stunning, probably the most dominant modern Formula 3 champion that we've seen. What does that do? It increases pressure through the roof. Expectation from Norway, who are used to having world rally champions, but single-seater champions, they're a little bit thin on the ground. You set the word for where it was to stand there and hear the Norsk national song in Monaco. No, it's a dream, of course, as a kid, you see it on Monaco as one of the historical bands. And the first time here, and to get a seer, is a really good feeling. My head. <laughs> we never had an F1 driver from Norway or anyone up there in F2 either, so it's really good and cool to see everyone supporting from the grandstand. is obviously quite special. smaller in Norway than it is in the UK but uh, he stood out uh, clearly and people say in the karting business here that they could see when he was six years old that wow something special about that boy. Today guys we are going to uh, a track um, which is one of the first tracks I ever went to in a, in a go-kart and, um, and yeah also see my F3 car and F4 car and yeah just have a a bit of a day at the track. Forgot my helmet, so I have to go uh, professional. <laughs> <laughs> well, it all began when Dennis was 11. His dad called me and he said that, thought that he would need some help 
with Dennis because he was doing well in junior karting. So I traveled with them to race in, in Italy. You could see immediately that, you know, he had a coolness, a, a smoothness in his driving. He was extremely aggressive in the overtaking and his personality is such a nice kid. It was not difficult to start uh, helping out as much as I could. So here we are. We got the F3 car, which I won in 2021 with, and the F4 car, uh, which I won uh, the F4 championship with in uh, 2019. One sponsor bought uh, this car and another sponsor bought the other car. So uh, it's actually never been together. So that's quite cool. You know, it's it's good to look back to, um, you know, my career so far that I've always managed to bounce back and sort of um, get into that rhythm and, and, and push for those victories and, and championships. I think uh, the main thing for me in terms of just how I've grown um, in the past year, for example, I think it's, it's mainly from the experiences I've, I've gotten through this year, uh, especially when there's been hard times. We pit anyway, so box this lap. Albert was fighting for the top 10, so some points, some little Whoa. points, put their new tires Oh no! And that is the end of Hauger's race was a very late call eh? because the car they were already approaching the main street so probably they they risk a bit to call the driver in and they rush to to have this pit stop it was a bit dangerous loose bodywork for Dennis Hauger I would say that that really needs to come in and be fixed for just the second time in Formula 2, Marcus Armstrong takes victory. Across the line in second comes to Ruvula, and Hauger hangs on. With the bodywork making a bit for freedom, he was able to beat Nissan into the line. Bravo, then, it's solid race. Solid race, first podium in F2. Woo! I want to be up there straight away and, and fight for those victories, and don't want to, to make too much of a time settling into anything and I want to be up there fighting for the trophies so hopefully we can keep this rhythm going. We know what Scafa Bologna is doing, we know what he has done last year with us in Formula 3. There's been an outstanding season. At the moment, he's struggling a bit to adapt. Working with Jen has been good. At times, we've both been struggling. Even though he has experience, he's also sometimes lost and not really understanding what's happening. Which is even more frustrating because you're, you're in the same position and the same way of thinking at that time. So. That's definitely been uh, one of the harder moments, I think, where we're sort of wanting to move in a different direction, sometimes knowing what we want, and other times we're, we're just lost. There is a lot of interest in what he's doing from everybody, you know, the public and the press. The press can see that every time they write about him, they get a lot of reader clicks. So he has become extremely popular, especially after winning the Formula 3 championship. For compared last year, he got much more attention and much more media coverage. This is something that for sure that maybe disturbed him a bit at the beginning. He need to be able to cope if you want to jump in a bigger paddock. I think as a rookie, that's one of the harder aspects to get the car and yourself to obviously push the limits. And it's not always that easy to find that straight away. It's part of the learning process, and it's a part that I'm thinking is capable of doing. It just needs to set up a mindset that is capable to decide when is the moment to think about media and when the moment to th think about racing. Yes, media is important, but of course, if you want to go fast, you need to be able to perform on your car, and, and your mind needs to be absolutely clear when you drive at 300 kph. Hi, Denise. Sitter du och koser dig med kex? Ja. En liten paus i köringen? Ja. Gå bara efter här. Du kör fort? Ja. Ja.
since he was born, he's been really interested in motorsport. When he was two years old and two months actually, we managed to try this one and uh, immediately he managed to handle it. Since I can remember the fun in it and the speed and the adrenaline and all it gives was something I always loved. So it's something that's you know, been a part of my life. His first go-kart here actually and uh, started to go uh, first on ice. You see the tires with the spikes and uh, that's where it all started. On that time it was all fun. We had no plans for anything actually, but uh, just did what we loved and had a good time together. Working as a team, me as an engineer and an engine tuner, and yeah, we were traveling around in the weekends, all family. Yeah, good times. When he was eight, he started uh, to drive a bit on the fields, uh, and uh, we had to rebuild the seat and everything so he could actually reach the pedals. He was not very. The steering <laughs> yeah, he was not tall. I'm pretty sure I can't get uh, in anymore. Let's see. Yeah, here actually you can see that we had to put some uh, blocks in here, in the middle, so I could uh, look over the steering wheel. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I can't get in anymore. <laughs> A bit smaller now, or bigger I mean. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> time flies. From this to an F2 car is a bit different. <laughs> I'm there to support him as a dad and uh, with the things that he needs help on. But uh, again, also he's growing up and need to handle more and more himself, of course. So I'm more in the background together with his um, manager to do yeah, contracts, sponsorships and so on. And then, then he's doing most of everything with the team and Red Bull and so on. So that's also a part of the journey. So I also need to know my place as a dad so, uh, and become more and more just dad. That's how it is. And also, yeah, I think that's it's, in a way it's kind of natural, but I will always be there to support him, of course. The season has been a roller coaster uh, overall. We had some good weekends in, in the mid season, uh, winning in Monaco and, and winning in uh, Baku. Hauga not letting him have any breathing room, and this is the Dennis Hauga we knew. Yuri Vips has hit the wall! Yuri Vips crashes out! And for so long he was leading, but he's gone! Dennis Hauger, who put the pressure on and gets his reward. Dennis Hauger wins a Formula 2 feature race. I obviously hoped to, to get that as a sort of a turning point. Um, but then we had a, a few bad rounds. It's definitely been a hard one. And there's a lot of points in my career where I came back a lot stronger the next time. And Dennis Hauger needed that one, you feel. The smile on the face tells you all you need to know. It's feeling better and still some things to work on, but definitely a, a step in the right direction. In terms of just taking the experiences you can with you, especially in your first season, I think that's more important than anything else. The licenses in karting have increased the last two, three years. In any other sport, when a sportsman does well, a woman does well in their country, suddenly there is much more interest also from kids wanting to do the same thing. So definitely it's a good thing for motorsport in Norway, what's happening now. It's always good to come back and, and, uh, and do a few laps in the kart. So it brings back a lot of good memories. But it's also good training for yourself physically and and also just to sort of come back and, and get a reminder why do you love what you do and, and uh, just in, enjoy it a bit, nothing seriousness and just uh, yeah, go out there and have fun.